Hello and welcome to my new video, how to draw a room in one point perspective from a bird's eye point of view seen from above. The first step in this drawing is to draw a dot in the centre of the page. And then from this dot we need to draw four lines which go to the four corners of the paper that we're using. These four lines will represent the four walls of the room that we're looking down upon. The next step will be to draw a rectangle which will represent the floor of the room that we're drawing. So you need to draw dots a roughly halfway along one of these diagonal lines. And then make sure that the rectangle touches each of the four diagonal lines that we've just drawn. Next we can start putting in some doors and things inside this room. So I'm going to start off with a door so I have a line going to the vanishing point in the centre of my page and then another line and this will represent the width of the door and then I mark a line to show the top line of the door that I'm going to create and then I'll draw a line around this to show the edging around the door. Next I'll draw a little light switch on the side and again the lines that go downwards towards the floor and towards the vanishing point will get closer as they get further away from the edge of the paper and nearer to the centre. Next I'm going to add some furniture so I'll draw the top, the highest point of a bookcase which will be a rectangle and then from that there will be three corners that will go to the vanishing point in the centre. I draw those lines along with my 4B pencil and then I look carefully and find the where the line touches the rectangle that we drew earlier and then I read across from that to find the base of this bookcase. Then I'm going to draw an edge within the open side of the bookcase so that it has a thickness to it. And now I think I'll put some shelves in and then I can find the edge of the shelves which will be parallel to the base of the paper and parallel to the line of the floor. Next I'll add a picture or a picture frame on the left hand side again reading the lines to the vanishing point in the centre and any lines that need to stay parallel to the floor, the rectangle in the middle, I make sure that they do roughly stay parallel to that. So I've done one side of the wall and now I'm going to do the opposite wall and I'm going to put a window in so I've made the, line, the two sides of the window and now I'm creating a depth to the window and putting a little cylinder on the windowsill as well. And now I'll add another piece of furniture, maybe a table this time. And again, starting with the rectangle at the top and lines going towards the centre vanishing point. And this time I'll make the table legs and again finding the base of the table by where the diagonals touch the original rectangle which will be the floor of this room. And now I'll add another door on this nearer wall and add a handle to each to try and give it a little bit more scale. And here I think I'll add something else, maybe another small window Again, it's sort of recessed, so it has a thickness going within it. And then maybe a lower table or container of some sort. And then on this side, at the top of the page, I'm going to add a, a lamp, like a standard lamp. And again, the pole of the lamp will be towards the vanishing point in the centre. As this is one point perspective, there's just one 
central point that everything shoots towards, unless it's a rectangle that we're looking straight down upon. And now I'll add a small chair, making sure that it's not too large for the size of the doors that I have, and maybe a small table by the side of it. And now I'll add yet another bookcase on this side of the room. And maybe some curtains along here. So basically I've got most of the things in the room. But it's looking a little bit cluttered. So I need to erase the centre vanishing point And all the extra lines that go towards the vanishing point. Which I no longer need. And now we can see the picture more clearly. And how it works with the objects in the room. And now I can put some details in. So maybe some books and bookcase. Maybe some ornaments like an Eiffel Tower or the Empire State Building. And maybe some bits of paper on some of the tables. I might add that in a second. And some plugs and flexes. Small little details which can be placed upon the things that we've just drawn. I hope you like this video and I hope you find it useful in your own drawing. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel Circle Line Art School for many more art videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.